All right, guys, a uh, couple of things. You know, one thing we've had, uh, you know, Trey Abraham, uh, wide receiver, lost his mom last night uh, to cancer. And uh, so our team just wants to extend their sympathies uh, to Trey's family. And, uh, you know, it's a tough deal. And she fought a very courageous battle. And uh, we've all been affected by that. So we just send our best to Trey and his family. Um, the Texas State game, going back to that, uh, you know, guys, I'll say some things. You know, we played better as a team. Uh, it's the first time I've seen our guys play with some edge to them, and I thought they really played together very well. Um, they were really hurt at the end of that game in the locker room, which is a good thing. And I don't know that I've seen them like that enough this year. Uh, so, I, you know, I thought that was really positive, that they, they cared that much and put that much into that, and that's what they got to do to finish up uh, this season, you know, the the game was really skewed in that we dominated it statistically in every area and just didn't make enough plays offensively. They gave us a lot of deep ball opportunities. And, and uh, the great thing about Josh was, I'll tell you, he threw the ball exactly where he was supposed to throw it just about all night. Uh, he just missed on a lot of the deep balls. And the great thing about him is I, I don't have to worry about him working on it because he'll <laughs> he won't sleep until he gets everything perfected. And uh, so we're in a good place as far as, you know, the offense and where we can go with that. And we improve defensively. So hopefully we'll carry that into uh, to this week. Uh, Alcorn State is a, you know, really good football team, football program. I don't know how familiar people around here are with Alcorn State, but they have, they have something we don't have, okay? They have tremendous tradition and history. You know, Steve McNair played there. Donald Driver played there. In fact, um, you know, Tech, or, um, Alcorn State has had 53 NFL football players come out of that football program. New Mexico State's had 48, just to put that in perspective for you. So this is really a uh, tremendous football program. And when I say program, I mean because they consistently win. They're coming in here at 7-2, and two, uh, which is a remarkable record for who they've played. They've ever played a very demanding schedule. And... Uh, you know, it's going to be a great test for us. And uh, like I say, I think our guys will be ready and, and will play well. Questions? What do they do well? Offensively? offensively? The, uh, they've got great team speed on offense. The quarterback is very athletic. He can run and throw. Uh, I think they do a great job of getting their players in space, uh, you know, and, and using their athletic ability. Uh, defensively, uh, they're really, in, you know, when you get down the red zone, they're really hard to score on because then all the pressures and man coverage and all that stuff starts coming, and they do a good, really nice job with that. So, something we're going to have to work on hard because we we struggled in the red zone last week against uh, Texas State. You know, we got down there a lot but didn't get touchdowns, and that's going to be key that we get touchdowns this week. They're a good program like you talked about, but this is the first time, I think since your first year, that you played an FCS team. It's something that people talked about being independent, you know, opened you guys up. So I guess, mm -hmm. is this uh, something like you, you want to, you, you feel like you can do as an independent program? Yeah, I mean, it certainly helps. Obviously, you know, when you look at other programs, UTEP, UNM, that, you know, they get to play FCS teams. And I think the difference still is, Jason, and, and um, you know, like they get to play them early in the year where you get to get a chance to get off on a good start. You know, I, I don't, particularly like playing it at the end of the season. You know, I think it would help us a lot more if we could open up with an FCS or have it in the first three games. And I think next year ours is still very late in the season. Uh, so, you know, that's something that hopefully in the future could get rectified, but uh, it does help your program, yeah. Do you players know that Auckland State's a pretty good team? Well, I, you know, I educated them Sunday in our team meeting to, you know, you know, here's who's come out of this place now and started naming some of the NFL players that come out have come out of there and, and then what their record is. And then, when, you know, when you watch the film, you see them play, you understand this is a good football team. So uh, they should understand that. Um, it's senior night. This, uh, I think this has been, you know, like along with last year's class. When you, last year you were junior and senior, and this year th these guys have known success now. Um, I don't know, have, have you felt that culture kind of trickle down to the younger guys from this class? Last class. Yeah, I think, you know, this senior class obviously plays has played a lot of football in their time here, and uh, they had a lot to do with what happened here last year as juniors. 
I think they're really disappointed that their senior year didn't, you know, turn into another bowl season. Um, but I think that they've they've left a legacy, maybe, of learning how to handle success uh, for the next group. Uh, you know, they they've been a good group to coach. Uh, unfortunately, really, a lot of them have just been injured throughout this year, and they haven't really gotten a chance to play their best football as seniors like our seniors did last year. And most of that's been because of injury. Um, you know, part of it's probably we just didn't handle winning very well. Uh, but, you know, they've been a great example, great kids. They're all going to graduate, you know, which is something that's really improved in our football program. And, uh, you know, now we have a foundation down where we've got a chance at least to succeed each year. Well, Coach, could you talk about what the team has left to play for with three games remaining, what they're, what they're talking about playing for? Yeah, Tom, I think you know, obviously number one, it is those seniors. We'd like to send those guys out with some wins. You know, I think they have certainly earned that. You know, number two, it's the future of our football program and where we need to go. Uh, you know, and some interesting things, you know, I, I shared this with our team actually before the season, all the way back to spring ball in the summer. But if you go back and look at uh, UTEP in 2014 was a bowl team. It went seven and six. Since that time, they've been five and seven, four and eight, and zero and twelve. And the University of New Mexico in 2016 was nine and four. The next year, they were three and nine. And then whatever they're going to be this year, that shows you how hard this is to sustain at this level. And I use that as an example for our team <laughs> before the season. You know, because I've been through this at East Carolina too. You you get you have all of a sudden this quick strike success and then people kind of get complacent they think it's just going to happen again and it doesn't it's really hard and you have to be able to maintain a mentality for it to continue like utah state has done i, I think they're a great example they always show up with the same mentality every year they're tough they're physical they got a chip on their shoulder that's what they are all about and that was really my failure as a coach this year i couldn't get this team to buy into that again last year they did but this year we we just didn't so I think that's the other thing we've got to play for the rest of this year is to get that back, you know. And I saw a little bit of that with Texas State, which was positive. Um, but we need to get that back and keep that momentum going and learn from this so that we don't keep going down, that we put a stop to this and, uh, and get back to winning. And so these last three games have a lot to do with that. To what degree is there disappointment this far into the season? Oh yeah, I mean, we're there's disappointment. I mean, you know, we're we're disappointed. You know, I'm, it's not so much the one loss record as it is the way we've played. You know, we just we haven't had the chemistry that we had last year, and again, we haven't had that attitude, that chip on your shoulder deal as much as what we had last year. So, I think that's the disappointment because that, that's where the wins and losses come from. And uh, so, you know, again, we got to try to send these seniors out with some wins, and and then start to right the ship so that we hit a good stride for next year. You mentioned is yourself. You wanna, is there anything you want to tell your seniors going into their last home game? Well, I think these guys know what they mean to me and to this football program. I mean, these guys have all been very dedicated and they've been very loyal and they fought through a lot of things, you know, to to get here and be successful. And they've all been great, great people. And that's what I'm most proud of. They're all going to work out of here with their degrees and they're all going to be successful, whatever they do from here on. You mentioned yourself when you were talking there. Like, have you looked, reflected on what, like, if you look back, like, would you do anything differently? I yeah, I think, you know, in spring ball, we had a lot of guys that were hurt that actually missed spring ball. There's like seven or eight guys, you know, a lot of them that were going to be seniors. And so, you know, going into fall camp, I think we probably were a little bit easier on them than what we were. We weren't quite as physical in camp, uh, trying to keep everybody healthy to get to the season. and. You know, I'm not sure that paid off for us. You know, maybe it was the right thing to do, maybe not. But moving forward, I think, you know, we, that's who we are. We're a blue collar, work hard team. So I think we have to take that risk of maybe somebody getting injured in a practice because it's a very physical practice as opposed to backing off and not getting the mentality um, that we want. That's, that's one thing I've looked at. And we'll talk about it as a staff when we get done and uh, see what else. But, uh, you know, because we, we really started after about the first four games, we started having much more physical practices. And that's since that time, we've kind of improved a little bit on both sides of the ball. Um, so we'll see where it goes. Are there any freshmen that haven't played that realistically could play these last three games? Um, possibly. Um, I think uh, Rodney Mitchell, the safety, is, maybe is one of those guys. I, I know he's definitely going to play on special teams. 
uh, Rodney McGraw, I mean. Uh, Navion Mitchell played Saturday, blocked the punt, okay. which was he was the guy that blocked the punt at Texas State, which was great to see a freshman jump out and do that. So he's going to play in, in every game from here on out, and that'll be his four. Uh, Max Wilhite, we're at least going to use him on some PAT field goal stuff. Uh, we've already used the other two freshman offensive linemen on that. Um, so, you know, there may be, you know, another guy or two. Ken, Danny, you got any questions for Coach? I believe he kind of covered it for me. Do you have any injuries? I'm good. Uh, no, other than Lottie, you know, Lottie had his meniscus surgery. Uh, so I don't know that we'll get him back this year. I hope maybe the last game or two. Uh, LaForce had his meniscus surgery, went well, wasn't quite as bad as what they thought. So he has a chance maybe to get back for uh, – Hopefully, maybe at least the Liberty game. Uh, that's what we're hopeful of. Uh, we didn't have any injuries coming out of Saturday, uh, other than uh, Tevis Abraham had a concussion anyway, but now he's going to be going home for his mom's funeral anyway. Um, so Dylan Brown should be back. He's going to be kicking today in practice. So got that fixed. And uh, so I don't know, no other injuries. What kind of leader is Terrell developed into? Terrell Hanks, uh, yeah. You know, he has been really a good leader. He's been a vocal leader. Uh, he was early in the year. That hurt us when he went out for those four games, you know, because we not only lost a really good player, we lost a voice there on that defensive side. Um, some other guys picked it up during that time. And, you know, and, and Terrell and I had that conversation. It, it's hard to lead when you're injured, you know, because you're not in practice and you're, you're not in the game. And even though you're on the sideline, it's hard to be the same. And uh, I think that was an experience for him. But since he's been back, he's really stepped up and, uh, again, has picked up that mantle for us. So uh, he's been a good one. He's kind of the last of the people that had to play as, as freshmen. It seems like since that class, you've been able to redshirt guys more often. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, definitely. And, and we'd like to. I think you're always going to have to play some freshman at a group of five school. Um, with the new rule, you're going to want to play some of them with the four-game situation. Uh, and I think we handled that pretty well this year. Um, but you don't want to play a whole class like we had to do to build this football program up to where it is now. That's difficult. That's difficult on the players and, and difficult on the coaches. So mm -hmm. thankfully, we're behind that.